Alright, in this video I'm going to talk about the logistic equation and we're going to find what's called the analytic solution to it, to this differential equation. So we can read it, it says the uh, change in P with respect to T, so you can think about P as being population, the change in population with respect to time equals little k times P times 1 minus P over big K. Again, P is just the population at some time T. Uh, little k is going to be a, a constant of proportionality and then capital K is going to be what's called the carrying capacity. You can think about that as being sort of the, uh, the number of objects that the environment can support. Alright, so what we're going to do is we're going to find an explicit solution for this differential equation and we can do that because this is actually just a separable differential equation. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is separate it out. I've got to put all the P's um, on the left side. So on the left side, I've got DP. I'm going to divide by P and 1 minus P over capital K. And then on the right side, we have our K, little k. I'm going to multiply both sides here by the DT. And now we've got things separated out. We're just going to integrate both sides. Okay, the right side's no, you know, no problem. The left side's a little worse. We're going to have to do partial fractions on this one. So we have 1 over P times 1 minus P over K. And what I'm going to do just to get rid of the fractions is I'm going to multiply the numerator by K and also the denominator by K. So again, this is our capital K in this case. So we have K. I could distribute the K uh, inside the parentheses. So if we distribute it inside the parentheses, we would have k times 1, or k. And then if I distribute it to the second term inside the parentheses, the k's would just cancel. And that would simply leave us here with p. All right, so now uh, we've got a rational function. I'm going to give each factor its own fraction. So we'll have a denominator of p, and we'll have a denominator of k minus p. So on top we'll put a and b, and now we have to figure out our constants, uh, our values for our constants a and b. So what I'm going to do for this, uh, for this equation is I'm going to multiply both sides by the denominator simply to get rid of the denominator, all the denominators. So I'm going to multiply the left side by p times k minus p. Well, I'll have to multiply the right side by that as well. And let's see. So when we do that, on the left side, we're simply going to be left with um, the value k. On the right side, when we do that, uh, when we distribute this, this p times k minus p to the first term, the p's will just cancel. So that'll leave me with a times k minus p. And then for the second term, the k minus p's will cancel, so we'll be left with b times p. We could do this equating of coefficients or anything like that. I'm just going to pick clever values for p. So suppose we let p equal 0. Well, on the left side, we would have k equals a times k minus 0 plus b times 0. So in that case, we would just have ak equals k we could divide both sides by k, and we would get our a value to be equal to 1. Likewise, I can take this equation, and instead of letting p equal 0, we can let p equal k. So if we do that, we still have our k left on the left side. On the right side, when we plug in uh, p equals k, we'll get uh, k minus k plus b times k. So the same thing, now our term involving a is gone, we can simply divide both sides by k, and we'll get that b is also equal to 1. Alright, so really um, we were integrating, okay, so the left side was this, uh, this, this partial fraction decomposition that we just did. So we said a is 1, so we would have 1 over p, plus we also said that b was 1, so 1 over k minus p. Uh, dp here. And then on the left side we were integrating uh, just our little constant of proportionality with respect to time. Okay, so that's kind of uh, the first step here, getting to where we can actually integrate this. 
All right, so the integration isn't bad. This just involves natural logarithms. So on the left side, we'll get the ln at the absolute value of p plus. Now, technically here, you would have to do a u substitution. You would let u equal k minus p. Um, and what you would end up with after you do that u substitution, we would have k minus p. But basically, remember whatever the coefficient is on in your variable, which here is a p, we basically have to divide by that. So we'll actually end up with a negative 1. On the right side, we'll have k times t. And somewhere we need to add on this arbitrary constant, so we'll put it on the, the right side. Okay, so you can really think about the negative right as being out front. So now we have logarithms that are being subtracted. And remember a property of logarithms. Uh, we can write this as division. But I'm actually going to do one thing first. I'm going to multiply both sides by negative 1. And this just puts it in a slightly better form down the road. So I'm going to multiply both sides by negative 1. So that's going to give me uh, negative kt minus c on the right side. So really this is ln of k minus p minus ln of p. So if we write that as division, we'll get ln of k minus p over p. That's going to be equal to negative kt minus c. Okay, so again, just this first term, uh, the ln of k minus p would go first, so that's what goes on the numerator. The p goes to the denominator. Alrighty here. Uh, so a little bit of work to, to, to solve this equation. What we're going to do next is simply exponentiate both sides to get rid of the natural logarithm. So if we do that on the left side, we'll just have the absolute value of k minus p over p. Again, this is capital K on the left. And on the right, we'll have e to the, well, negative kt minus c. Um, let's see, a couple things here. I'm going to uh, break up the right side. We can rewrite e to the negative kt minus c. We can write that as e to the negative kt times e to the negative c. Because remember, with like bases, we would just add the exponents. So now we have k minus p over p equals, I'm going to put the constant out front, e to the negative c times e to the negative kt. And now I'm going to remove the absolute value. Uh, we would get k minus p over p. But then when we do that, we would have to make it positive and negative, e to the negative c times e to the negative kt. And usually what people will do at this point is we're going to say, let's just let a equal this constant, positive or negative, e to the negative c. Um, so we'll get, well, k minus p over p equals a times e to the negative kt. All right, so getting closer here. We're almost there. A few more steps. Again, what we're simply uh, trying to do in this problem, again, we're trying to find a formula for the population uh, p. So really what I'm going to do is now solve this for p. And I can break this, this fraction on the left up. I can make it k over p minus p over p, which would just be 1 equals a times e to the negative k t. <coughs> okay, so we can add 1 to both sides. That'll give me capital K over P equals, well, 1 plus a e to the negative k t. And let's see, a couple more things here. Now I'm simply just going to multiply both sides by P and divide by this quantity of 1 plus a e to the negative k t. So if I do that, um, the p would go to the right side. And then if we divide by this quantity, 1 plus a e to the negative k t. So again, this is our capital K, our carrying capacity on top. Again, this little k that the e is being raised to is our constant proportionality. <clears throat> so I'm going to write this one more time. So we have p equals capital K over 1 plus a uh, times e to the negative k t. Okay, a couple things now. Um, again, we're trying to find a value here for simply for a. And what we're going to do is we're going to revisit this equation that we found a second ago. 
And what we're going to do is we're simply going to plug in. Um, we're simply going to plug in our value. We're going to let t equal zero. Okay, so at t equals zero, the population p. That's really the same thing as p of t. But if we plug in t equals zero, it says we'll get the population at time zero. And usually we just write that as a little p sub zero. So this stands for the initial population. Again, and that's going to be the population at time t equals zero. So if we plug that back into our equation, if we plug in t equals zero, if we do that, we'll get k minus, well, the initial population over the initial population. And then on the right side, we'll have a times e to the negative k times 0. OK, so e to the 0 is just 1. So really, we have k minus uh, the initial population over the initial population equals a. Um, and now we've basically got everything we need. We've got our solution, and now we've got a way to uniquely determine our value for a. So what we would say is, we would say a solution to the logistic equation. We would say a solution to this logistic equation is going to be this formula. It says p of t equals this carrying capacity over 1 plus a times e to the negative kt. And you'll have to somehow deduce this constant of proportionality uh, you know, in an actual problem. Sometimes they'll give it to you, but typically not. Um, and now we know also exactly the value for a. It says that a is simply going to be this, uh, the carrying capacity minus the initial population, all divided by the initial population. Okay, and we've got exactly, uh, exactly what we need here. We've now got an explicit solution to our logistic equation.